One of the most important concepts in ethics is the concept of lying. It may even, as we shall see, help us create a user manual for the good life. Sam Harris starts by asking the question, is it wrong to lie? To answer this question, we first need to understand what is a lie. And we need to understand that the boundaries between lying and deception are often vague. Harris points out that we can even deceive with the truth. For example, we may be standing on the sidewalk next to the White House, call Facebook and say, Hi, this is Sam Harris. I'm calling from the White House and I'd like to speak to Mark Zuckerberg. Harris concludes that to lie is to intentionally mislead others when they expect honest communication. A lie is born when we believe one thing while intending to communicate another. People lie so that others will form beliefs that are not true. Of course, even if you do not intend to mislead, that does not mean your beliefs about the world are true. People lie for all sorts of reasons. To avoid embarrassment, to exaggerate their own achievements, to disguise bad behavior, to spare feelings of friends and family, and so on. Harris tells a story about a friend who took soap, shampoo, and body lotion from a hotel room, used them as a gift for her friend, and when asked where she got it from, said it was from the hotel gift shop. Unfortunately, her child then said, No, mommy, you got it from the bathroom. Surely this little lie did nothing to increase the level of trust between two friends. Harris cites research that implies that all types of lying, including white lies, are associated with less satisfying relationships. If we commit to being honest with people, we have no lies to keep track of and can simply be ourselves in every moment. Honesty can force any dysfunction in our life to the surface. If you cannot lie about your faults and life crises, then you are forced to deal with them. It's important to remember, perhaps, that it's possible to be both honest and kind. Harris distinguishes between two types of lies. You can lie about what you think the facts are, and you can fail to correct other people's false impressions. Lies of commission and lies of omission. They may be morally equivalent, but are not always. This book focuses on lies of commission. Sometimes we lie about our feelings in connection with gifts. Jerry Seinfeld's show about nothing has a sketch about this. If you repeat the name of a gift, you cannot possibly like it. Like when we open a gift and go, Oh, tube socks! We pretend to be happy with the gift and present a false face. We lie about our true sentiments. According to Harris, white lies are still lies. In telling them, we incur all the problems of being less than straightforward in our dealings with other people. Sincerity, authenticity, integrity, mutual understanding... These and other sources of moral wealth are destroyed the moment we deliberately misrepresent our beliefs, whether or not our lies are ever discovered. By lying, we deny our friends access to reality. False encouragement can be very costly to another person. You may lie about your thoughts about a friend's ability to go into acting, which might lead them into pursuit of a career they are unlikely to succeed in. False encouragement is a kind of theft. It steals time, energy, and motivation. You're setting them up for future disappointment. You may be wrong, of course, but the best you can do is tell them what you actually think and believe. When we presume to lie for the benefit of others, we have decided that we are the best judges of how much they should understand about their own lives. Lying to our friends and family about medical conditions is very common. Harris believes this means that we miss out on opportunities for deepening love, compassion, and forgiveness. Wisdom remains unshared, promises unmade, and apologies unoffered. When asked for an honest opinion, we do our friends no favors by pretending not to notice flaws in their work. If you give negative feedback honestly, they will also know that your positive feedback is honest and therefore more meaningful. What about secrets? Well, you can keep a secret and remain honest simply by saying that you promised not to tell. According to Harris, the principle never tell a lie might be easy to understand, but only a psychopath would endorse it. If it can sometimes be acceptable to kill someone in self-defense, then surely lying could be acceptable sometimes as well. Liars must keep track of their lies. And for your lies to be coherent with the rest of the world, you may have to come up with more lies. Telling the truth means you have nothing to keep track of. 
By lying, you lose a chance to have authentic conversations. Harris cites research indicating that liars actually trust people they deceive less, and surely the feeling is mutual. To truly have integrity, we must not feel the need to lie about our personal lives. People create all sorts of problems for themselves by lying. They destroy marriages, careers and reputations. Big lies by major companies and the government have now led people to reflexively distrust those in positions of authority. We therefore cannot say anything of substance on climate change, pollution, vaccinations, foreign conflicts and many other topics. Lying is, almost by definition, a refusal to cooperate with others. To lie is to recoil from relationship. Lies are the social equivalent of toxic waste. Everyone is potentially harmed by their spread. The book also contains two appendices. The first is a conversation with Ronald A. Howard, whose ethics seminar inspired Harris to re-evaluate the importance of lying. Attending the seminar was like receiving the user's manual to a good life, making him able to bypass most of the needless misery he read about or witnessed in other people's lives. They discuss the Anne Frank case, lying when a murderer comes knocking and asks if you know where his next victim is located. Howard agrees that sometimes an enemy is a real enemy, but it's not inconceivable that one could transform even very difficult situations by telling the truth. They also discuss lying to a child with an illness that gives him two months to live. Do you lie about that, and perhaps about meeting again in the afterlife? Howard believes that even in this case, you should tell the truth as you believe it to be. He introduces the concept of skillful truth-telling for difficult situations like when a person with Alzheimer's who wakes up every day wondering where her dead husband is, you might say that he is where he usually is at this time of day, or something similar. This is not untrue, and it may spare her the agony of living through a feeling of loss every day anew. According to Harris, it makes sense to want to be in touch with reality. Given that your every move in life will be constrained by whatever the facts are, both out in the world and in the minds of others, being guided by anything less than these facts will leave you perpetually vulnerable to embarrassment and disappointment. The second appendix is a conversation with readers who question some of the ideas Harris put forth in the book. One of the most asked questions is about lying about Santa being real. Harris says you may give your children a more thrilling experience at Christmas, but you also give them a sense that you may be lying about other stuff as well. This has turned out to be a somewhat controversial claim. Another question is, should the principles Harris puts forward apply across cultures? Harris believes the way a culture treats questions of honesty will determine the psychological distance between friend and stranger. Universal norms regarding lying must therefore exist in order for us to bridge these distances. The virtue of honesty is therefore not simply a symptom of Western provincialism. A principle of not lying might have serious consequences for your life. Think about, for example, the consequences of having an affair. If you know that your ethics prevent you from telling a lie, you also know that you cannot have an affair without facing the consequences, which may well be the end of your marriage. Is it ever okay to lie, then? Harris leaves the door open for lying in situations where a person is likely to be killed for their beliefs. In some societies, you may be killed for coming out as homosexual, or for openly declaring that you do not believe in God. If this is your situation, then lying may well be the least of your problems. That was non-fiction takeaway from Sam Harris' book, Lying. It's an important subject and a great book. My only real criticism of the book is that it's too short. There is much more in the book, obviously, but to tell you the truth, I would still like for Harris to write more about lying. More non-fiction takeaway to come. Please like the video and subscribe to support the growth of this channel.